In the last video, we went ahead and created a prefab for our asteroid. Let's make sure I saved it. I did. So this time around, we're going to go ahead and create the asteroid manager, which is going to be responsible for spawning all of the asteroids in our game. Later on, when, you, when we learn about Bezier curves, it'd be nice to kind of come back to this project and go ahead and lay out a really nice asteroid belt. But for now, let's just stick to something simple like a grid where we go ahead and put, if we take a look at the lines down here, maybe put one on every intersection on the X, Y, and Z. So we basically end up with a big cube of asteroids. And then we can go from there. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into scripts. We're gonna go ahead, create a new one. I'm gonna call it Asteroid Manager. I'm gonna go ahead, create a new empty. I'll call that Asteroid Manager. And let's go ahead and open up that script. All right. So I'm gonna come in. I just always get rid of the start and the update that it comes with. I know you can edit the template so it doesn't put that there, but then the next update, it's there again. I'll just delete it. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a method to place asteroids. Now for this, I'm simply gonna use a nested for loop. So I'm gonna say for int, and we'll do the x axis first. So x equals zero, x is less than, and how many spots do we wanna go across? For now, for our grid spacing, let's just, I don't know, let's make it 10. So I'm gonna make this a serialized field. It's an integer, and I'm just gonna call it grid spacing. And for now, it's equal to 10. Then of course we'll increment x. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a separate method for the uh, creating the asteroid. I'll just call it instantiate asteroid. And we're gonna need a prefab for that asteroid. So let's go ahead, we'll add that as well. Now maybe later on we'll go ahead and add multiple asteroids, I'd like to. In which case we'll need an array, but for now we don't. Uh, but we do know that we're gonna be spawning asteroids. And there's a couple of ways I can look at this. I can make it a game object, which makes, which makes it really easy to instantiate it. Every game object has a transform, so I can also refer to it as a transform. And I can also do it as an asteroid. And that means that when I go to put it into the prefab, the only thing that's actually gonna fit there is an asteroid. And it's just one of those things to think of. It does add that little bit of extra layer of, of error correction because you don't have to worry about putting anything in that prefab besides an asteroid. You know, whatever you're gonna spawn here is going to be an asteroid, but it does make instantiating it a little bit trickier, but that's fine. We'll go ahead, we'll figure it out. I was gonna call it asteroid. So I'm gonna go down to here and say instantiate. And right here, we're gonna be using the, the third one, I guess we'll go with. Actually, there's one with the parent, isn't there? Yes. So I'm actually gonna be using number six here. So we need the object, which we wanna instantiate, the vector three, which is just the position we wanna instantiate it at, the quaternion rotation, what direction we want it to face when it first comes out, which really does not matter because it's gonna be rotating anyway, as well as the parent we want this to be a part of. Now, if I'm gonna go ahead and spawn, let's say a thousand asteroids, I don't want a thousand asteroids filling up my hierarchy. So I'm gonna make the asteroid manager its parent and they'll all spawn under it. So let's go ahead and use number six. So I'm gonna say asteroid and I wanna go ahead and spawn it at transform.position. Now this is gonna be called a lot at the very beginning when we're very first putting them down, but it's not gonna be called again anytime after the game starts. So for now, I'm just gonna to stick to transform position. If I find that there's too much of a hiccup at the spot where it goes out and places all the asteroids, I may come back in and cache that transform and see if that actually improves the performance. Now for rotation, I'm just gonna use the quaternion identity, make it face forward. And then for the parent, I'm just gonna say transform. We will be the parent. Now, if I save this off, we're gonna need a different position here. We're actually are gonna be changing it through X, Y, and Z. That's right. Int X, int Y, int Z. I'll uh, we'll deal with that in a bit. Let's come in. Uh, we thought we'd get an error. Might not. Let's go ahead, we'll just go fill this in. So I'm gonna say instantiate asteroid, and then we're gonna pass in these three variables. Well, I'm gonna pass in X. Uh, we don't have Y and Z yet, so I'm just gonna pass in zeros for them. We'll go ahead, close this off. Let's jump back into Unity and let's see how this works. We hit start. And we should get rid of all the other asteroids. It did not instantiate. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna go ahead, get rid of both of these since we have prefabs for them. Did I not save my asteroid manager? I did save it. 
but I did not attach it. That usually helps. And I made the mistake. <laughs> when I tell everyone all the time, you can't have spaces in your class names. So I'm going to go ahead and save that off. I'm going to double click it to reopen it. This one will disappear. There we go. And I'm not sure if it updated it automatically for me or when it created the class, it just knew automatically to get rid of it to begin with. Either way, it's fixed. Go ahead, drop it on. We need a prefab for the asteroid. We'll go ahead, we'll drop that asteroid in there. We have a grid spacing of 10. We'll go ahead, hit start, and we should end up with 10 asteroids, which we did not. All right, let's go ahead, we'll take a look here. And I bet it would help if I actually called place asteroid somewhere. <laughs> ah, it's late at night. What time is it? Ah, it's only one in the morning. We'll go ahead, we'll get this one in, and we'll call place asteroids. Now, some people might ask why, again, I'm just not putting all of this in start instead of calling a method, because I'm probably not going to put anything else in start. And it's because if, when I have my game reset, I may not actually have the scene itself reset. I may need to have my game manager spawn some more asteroids for me. And if so, I just have a method here. I can just go ahead and make it public. And away we go. So I'm going to go ahead and save that off. We'll come back in. Let's hit play after it recompiles. And there we go. We got asteroids. Now there's 10 of them, but they're all the same. And of course, we can move them out. They're all rotating at different speeds, uh, slightly different sizes. Remember, we had a 20% variation. Great. So let's go ahead and change this position here. Let's start putting them out on X. So I'm going to go ahead and say new vector three. And I'm going to say transform dot position dot X. So our current position on X plus X. I'm going to say transform dot position dot Y plus the Y that we're going to be passed in, which in this case is zero. And then transform dot position dot Z plus Z. That Z we're being passed in. So we're going to go ahead, take our current position, add in the X, Y, Z that were passed in, and then go ahead and place it there. Now I should actually go ahead and spit this out as a game object so I can go ahead and rename it, but we'll go ahead and just keep working at this. So I'm going to move this around a bit just so we have everything showing up on the screen in one spot. Now remember I said there was four parameters that we're working with. I'll put them all on one line, or sorry, separate lines. So we have the asteroid, we have the position, or so we have the the object, the position, the rotation, and the parent. Now it should go ahead and spawn them out and align for me. There we go. Obviously way too close together. That's fine. That's easy to fix. We just go ahead and change the spacing to, uh, I don't know, like 100. But it works. So let's go ahead. Whoa. Let's not get crazy. Let's go ahead and get Y in there next. So... Nested for loops. It's just a for loop inside of a for loop. And to be honest, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the first one. Paste it in. Tab that. There we go. And we'll just change these X's to Y's. Whoops, forgot one. It's very important to change them. If you forget and you're using X's here, bad stuff is going to happen. Now, one thing to know with nested for loops is that when we start going through this, we're going to go through and the first value for X is zero. Then we come down here and we start doing the Y's. And the first value for Y will be zero. And we'll go ahead, we'll call that instantiate. So it's going to put it at zero, zero for the X, Y. Uh, then when it comes back here and it goes again, well, the next one it's going to do is zero. We're still going to be zero on X, but we're going to finish this loop first. So we're going to go through and do Y equals one, Y equals two, Y equals three, all the way up to the whatever we have for grid spacing before we go through and start doing X. So before we get to that X equals one, we'll have done all the Y's. Likewise, when we do the Z's, we're gonna put them in here as well. Let's do that next. It's gonna do all of the Z's before it even touches the Y's. And then again, all the Y's before it touches the X's. Now it just dawned on me that we can't really have grid spacing uh, here. This is the spacing I want between each spawn point. What I really want here is the number of asteroids in one spot. 
So I'm going to leave grid spacing at 9. Well, we're going to re rename it. I'm going to call it um, number of asteroids on an axis. There we go. That's pretty descriptive. Then I'll just go ahead and make another one. Serialize field, int, and grid spacing. And this I'll have equal to 100. So we're going to be spawning 1,000 asteroids because since we're doing... 10 by 10 by 10, so 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. And we're going to come down here now, and where we're actually adding in the X, what we want to do is multiply this by, I put grind spacing, I meant grid spacing. Let's go ahead and change that. Remember to make sure when you're changing it to always refactor in case something is using it. Grid spacing, there we go. Then of course here, Y times grid spacing. And then again for Z. Z times grid spacing. There we go. Now later on, I want to add a little bit of offset as well because this is just build super straight columns. We'll want that offset, but that's something I'm going to add later on. We'll just add a little bit of random spacing. And I'm not worried about that just yet. Right now, I just want to have a nice big clump of asteroids on the scene. So number of asteroids, 10. Grid spacing, 100. We go ahead, we start. We have X, Y, and Z being populated. And I'm not actually passing in the values here. So X, now we can pass in Y, and now we can pass in Z. Come back out. Let's go ahead and start this. Uh, we got a thousand asteroids. It looks pretty laggy. If we zoom out a bit, we can see them all. 100, obviously too big of a spacing. Let's try 50, and for re at least recording while playing the game, that was too much as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it down to five, and grid space by 50. Now make sure to save before you go ahead and hit play here. This is where it's important to make sure that you've hit save, because if it crashes, you might not get any of the updates you made inside of Unity. Which to be honest, right now we're just scripting, there's not a whole lot of Unity stuff going on, but it's good just to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and put my dude in the scene, make sure he's at 000. zero. Go ahead and start it off. And yeah, I just want to kind of fly around in there. And of course, if you look around, they're all over the place. Uh, that's still too far apart, I feel. So I'm going to have it one more time. Now this is a game I've already built a couple times. And I can tell you, once you actually start putting asteroids in, an actual 3D model, it does look a lot better. But for now, that looks fine. We got what we want. We got that big cube. We've learned how to use nested for loops. And actually, before we do go, I want to put that offset in. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I do want that offset just because it's... Uh, Bother me that they're all in straight lines. So, we're not player movement, asteroid manager. I'm just going to make another method to calculate the offset. Don't really need it, but I like it. Uh, let's call it asteroid offset. And I'm actually going to return a float with this. And I'm just going to say random.range. And I just want to have something like, what am, what am I doing? I'm doing, uh, well, I'm thinking about 25 here. So, let's just do grid space divided by two. Grid spacing divided by two. And. Should we leave it as an int? No, let's go. Well, it doesn't really matter in this case. We'll go ahead and do it that way. And I'm going to make this negative grid spacing divided by two. Then grid spacing divided by two again. So whatever we have for grid spacing, have it. And this line is getting a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and tab it in a bit. All right, so we'll take our current position. We're going to add on this. Then also add on... Asteroid offset. There we go. And I just want to keep it tabbed. There we go. Let's go ahead. We'll jump into Unity again. Hit save. Go ahead. Start this up. And we got an error. And what did I do wrong here? I forgot to put the little brackets at the end. And of course, now they're going to make me tab again. All right. Now let's see if that gets rid of all the errors. All of them but one. And of course, I mentioned it was late, right? <laughs> We're going to go ahead and return the number that we get back from that random dot range. 
There we go. Now we've got them all, right? There. So let's go ahead and we'll start it up, but now there should not be straight rows. There we go. A little bit better. Uh, later on, like I said, when we learn about Bezier curves, it'll look even better. And I would make the asteroids a little bit bigger, but like I said, I know when I put the models in, this is the scale I want. It's amazing how much things change when you're really tired at night. Let's do 3.6. Now you can really start getting some weird shapes. I still want to keep them fairly round, so I'm actually going to bump this up to say 2.4. Let's do 6. Again, we'll just change this when we actually put the asteroids in, the models. But yeah, starting to look a little bit better here. We got stuff to fly through now. And there we go. All right, that's all I wanted to do today is just get that asteroid manager working. Go ahead, show you nested for loops and putting things on a grid. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I could be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.